everyone, Professor August here, and today we're going to be talking about this little book, Tehrangelis. It is a new addition to our mass of Asian American literature. Uh, this is written by Porachista Hakpur. She's an Iranian American writer. I love this book because it talks about issues of class, race, immigration, gender, sexuality, women's liberation, pandemic, politics, capitalism, and none of it is didactic. So it's all told through storytelling. So it doesn't feel like you're getting a morality lesson. Uh, Tehrangelis is a term that refers to specific regions of Los Angeles where there are huge amounts of Iranian Americans. So Beverly Hills, Bel Air, parts of Tarzana, Encino, Sherman Oaks. In certain parts of Los Angeles, there are like 10% of the population that's Iranian American. And then certain parts are like 40 or 50% Iranian American. And it spans all sorts of religions. So Muslim, uh, Jews, Christians, Baha'is, Zoroastrians, non-practicing, non-affiliated atheists. We have the gamut of Iranian Americans living in that part of uh, Los Angeles. So the plot of the book is really interesting because it takes place during the pandemic and it was written in real time during the pandemic. So what we all experienced a few years ago during lockdowns and quarantine, that's what the characters are going through. But it's not really a book about the pandemic. It's just, if you can imagine Little Women, the four sisters from that book, uh, thrown into a scenario like Schitt's Creek, the TV show, where these people are really disconnected from one another, but because of global circumstances, they're thrown into a house together. Uh, that's what this book is. The family is an elite Iranian American family, and they've gotten their fortune through a snack food, and they're really disconnected from one, one another. They're kind of disconnected from reality, uh, and the book actually reads like a reality TV show. In fact, it starts off with the family trying to get a contract for a reality TV show that would follow them around, and they would be the first sort of Iranian-American family that's uh, shown on this sort of like Bravo Universe type uh, television series. The characters are what really make up this book. So each chapter more or less follows one character. And there are six that are the primary characters. There's the two parents and the four daughters or the four sisters. Um, the mother, Homa, she is kind of like the most normal of the family. She's really depressed. She's not really taken by money. She spends most of her time just like napping and sleeping and keeping her distance from the family. Uh, it doesn't seem like she's into the whole reality TV series that her daughters want to uh, pursue. It doesn't seem like she's down with her husband's lifestyle and the things that he's into. She seems to really miss her homeland, Iran. Uh, and she just has a hard time assimilating to the way the United States works and her life here uh, in Beverly Hills, in a Beverly Hills mansion, of course. Her husband, Al, or Ali, he is the patriarch of the family, and he is not so assimilated, but he tries really, really hard. He's like most Iranian men who come and they strike it rich and they try to assimilate as best they can. He takes accent reduction courses to try and get rid of that thick uh, Persian accent that he has. Uh, he has fancy cars. He has a really lovely house. Uh, he takes drugs and, you know, sleeps around with different women. His wife knows about these things, and that could partly be why she's so depressed and doesn't like the lifestyle that she has, even though that the fact that she's super rich. Um, her husband, though, is, you know, this magnate. He creates this snack food called Pizza Bomb, B-O-M-M-E, because it's fancy, like the French. And he discovers this idea or comes up with this idea after going to the Northridge Fashion Center, where I spent many a day after school uh, when I was growing up, uh, going mostly just for the air conditioning because the valley is super, super hot. And so he comes up with this food uh, snack and then sells the idea and becomes super rich. And then he and his wife have four daughters. And the four daughters are a hoot and some of them are really difficult to deal with and hard to read about because they're all characters that we all kind of know really, really well. The oldest daughter, Violet, or Banesha, is a model. She is arguably the most beautiful of the sisters, or at least that's the perspective we get from a lot of the um, ancillary characters. And she's very curvaceous and she is a junk food addict. So she only eats sweets and candies and really bad foods. She's gaining weight, so she's thinking about becoming a plus size model. Um, and like her entire world sort of revolves around food and the modeling industry. Her younger sister, so this is the second sister, her name is Roxy or Roxana or Roxana Vanna. She is the social media influencer and she's super self-involved and doesn't seem to really care about much else that's going on. Um, she's also really interesting as a character because her 
her, her whole MO throughout the book is this big secret that she has because she's been telling people that she's Italian American. Uh, and it kind of works because the family's last name is Milani, like the city Milan in Italy. And the dad has created a pizza snack food. So it kind of works with her aesthetic. Um, she kind of looks Italian, so she just goes with it and doesn't tell people that she's Iranian American. And she doesn't want to be associated with the Middle East or anything that has to do with the Middle East. Uh, so that's a huge plot point throughout the book. The third character, the third daughter is Mina. Mina is kind of sickly. She has like these weird um, medical conditions that nobody can really tell what they are. She just sort of seems lethargic, but she's really cerebral. So she thinks everything through. She's also the queer character in the book. So she is coming to terms with her sexuality. And she's also kind of a stealth social media influencer because she is super involved in different um, K-pop groups uh, online and you know has all these profiles that she can tap into and create different uh, personas for herself. So she has a huge following, just nobody knows that it's her doing it. And the last daughter, the youngest one, Haley or Hale, she's just a hoot. She is this young thing that doesn't really understand anybody or anything. She's super self-involved and she's super into fashion, uh, making herself fit and uh, going down this like Instagram uh, health kick but the issue is she becomes a right-wing nut job and so the fact that the book takes place during the pandemic leads to a lot of interesting conversations between her and the family because you have a group of people who are dealing with reality and then you have this right-winger who is just like nothing is real nothing that's happening in the news is real and so the family has to contend with her she does have a little come to jesus moment which is great uh, towards the end of the book As far as the easiness of the read, it's actually quite easy. It's only a little over 300 pages. It goes really quickly because a lot of the themes are really familiar to us. It takes place during a time in which every one of us experience. The characters are super familiar, especially if you watch like Shaws of Sunset or the Kardashians or any of these other like Bravo TV series. Uh, we know what the motivations of some of these characters are. Um, in terms of the writing, it's very good. There's not a lot of jargon, sort of like Persian uh, words that you have to keep track of. A lot of it is uh, understandable in context, and it's pretty limited to its usage. There are two or three pages that are solely in Persian. Um, that section is called Zibaiya Tabi Iran, or the beauty of the nature of Iran. And it's from the mother's perspective, Homa, where she talks about um, her desire for people to put aside their politics and prejudices and just focus on a country's beauty. And if everybody could do that, we would live in a better world. So it's just like a two-page section that isn't accessible to non-Persian readers, but the rest of it is super easy to get through. Overall, I think this book is a great read. It is a satire. It is funny. Um, it deals with a very specific portion of the Iranian-American diaspora in Los Angeles. It has a great sense of morality, uh, right versus wrong, uh, what we as Americans have to deal with, uh, with capitalism and gender and sexuality and politics. I'm really curious to have people read it and see what they think. And I'm just glad that we have another Iranian American voice added to the mass of Asian American fiction that's being published. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Catch you in the next video.